Welcome back everyone to my YouTube channel. It is Mary and today I am doing a Flashback Friday card. I said in my intro that I was going to start doing these and this is the first one in the installment where I'm pulling out a stamp that I've had for years. It has to be eight years. It has to be. So this stamp is from Stampin' Up! Um, circa 2010, 2011, something like that. And it is called From the Garden. Beautiful stamp. Please don't ask me what flower that is. I have no green thumb. I'm sure I could probably Google it, but uh, yeah. So there it is. It's a beautiful stamp. And what I've done is I used some VersaFine Onyx Black ink on some watercolor paper three times. I'm going to do three different coloring techniques, three different mediums for this project. So the first one I'm going to show you here in just a minute side by side on the first the second time I did it I used a brayer you saw me do that and I think it skipped a little bit so it gave a funny outline to the image and I actually kind of liked the blurred image it made it really dark I'm going to show you in a second but there it's a much thinner line see on the right how it kind of blurred and then on the left it's came out perfect so that's just kind of the difference between the mistake that sometimes turns into a good thing and then what was it it was intended to do okay so I got my watercolor brush here picked that up at Joanne Fabrics and what I'm doing is the first technique which is using my ink tense colored pencils now I'm coloring in two different shades of this pink purplish color and I'm starting with the darker one closer to the pit of the flower and then I'm using the lighter one around. You see me doing that here. And then I'm going to bring in my watercolor brush and just place some water down and spread out that color. It goes on in tense, hence the ink tense name. However, it lightens up actually the most of the three mediums. And I do two different layers of this colored pencil technique. So I think you could probably choose a little bit darker, a little bit more intense color, but I still thought it came out pretty light. Now I do have a favorite and I'll go over that in a minute, um, but I think that it depends on what you're going for. Everybody likes every, something different in their project. So I really don't want to try to compare these three cards. I just can compare the mediums and how they, uh, the results were if that makes any sense at all. Okay, so I did the same thing with uh, the greens on the leaves. And so I'm just using the darker color at the base and then I'm pulling that out to the end of the leaf. And again, these lightened up pretty, uh, pretty much at the uh, end when they dried too. Before I go in with the second layer on this medium, I'm gonna make sure that I heat set it, make it sure it's really nice and dry. And then I'm gonna go back in here with my second layer just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more oomph to that color. So uh, that's I did two layers with that. And then I cut this flower out, use, leaving a white border around it, and then also used my X-Acto knife to kind of get in those little areas there, leaving a white border as well. So uh, not as hard as it looks, you just kind of have to go slow and steady. Now this card paper pack I picked up at Joanne Fabrics as well for $1.99 and it is beautiful watercolor background. So that was uh, what I used on all three cards. The second medium I used, I skipped the first layer so you didn't have to sit through that. Um, but I am using the Distress watercolor or Distress markers. Now I didn't have any until I saw they were 50% off at Joanne Fabrics and I grabbed a set of the bright colors. And so the first time I went, I did this, what I feel my mistake was, is I put down the marker all around the flower first, then I went in with water and added in, it left a lot of streaks because I don't, I feel like it dried too fast. So what I did the second go around was I would take each piece of those petals and do one at a time. So here I'm putting the color down, grabbing my water brush and pulling it out. And I was able to get rid of some of those lines throughout the flower. Almost as if you accidentally write on a whiteboard with some permanent marker. Um, not saying I've ever done that. But you can take a dry erase marker and color over that permanent marker and it takes it right off. And that's kind of what happened here. Okay, so my third technique here is going to be using my very, very underrated Stampin' Up! Ix. I had no idea that they blended this beautifully. Oh my goodness, and I've had them for a smooth 10 years. 
So what I'm doing here is I took uh, Rich Razzleberry and Melon Mambo, and I have used my little ink dauber, and I'm just blending that out from the center to outside, out to the end of the petals. Oh my goodness, it came out so pretty. And this, yes, this one is my favorite. It's the most intense. It's the most exciting. I just really, really love this. Now, I would love to hear which one you like the best too, because everyone you know, has their preferences. Um, this one, and then I used the same thing, the same technique with two different greens on the leaves. And wowza. So I just, I really like the way this turned out. And I'll definitely be doing this in the future. Now, if you wonder why that's all chopped up, it's because I'm going to lay the leaves flat and then I'm going to pop up the flower with some dimension just to give it a little bit, so a little pizzazz. So here I'm going to do the same thing with all my sentiments. It's a Mother's Day card and this stamp set that I have here is super old too. So again, it's Flashback Friday. So I am heat setting that with some embossing powder clear over some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And if you don't have coordinating dies for everything, I don't, I sometimes don't think about this, but when you cut out around your sentiments, it really makes them stand out. I love that look. So instead of just cutting plain squares or um, just using maybe some shapes that you have in your stash for dies, try cutting out your sentiment. I really think that adds something so fun and beautiful. And then it looked alone when I just placed that onto the flower. So which, with each of the sentiments, what I did was attach it to a darker color behind it and then recut it out so that you have a little border behind that uh, sentiment. And then here I have put glossy accents in the middle of that flower and then I'm adding on this one in particular, I'm using the Ranger black enamel dots. And then in the other card, one of the other cards, I use Nuvo drops and then another one I use some embellishments. So right now, um, on the two flowers that I did not cut a white border around, I'm going around with my Memento Black ink. Highly, highly recommend using that marker or any black marker to do that. It really solidifies the image and it covers any boo-boos too. So here you see me laying down my leaves all flat-like and then I'm popping up that flower so that I could give that some, some interest. The 3D look, it looks really cool especially when you've cut apart your image. So I'm doing that here. I'm, I don't know if you've noticed in the history of my cards, but I don't really do much with flowers. So this was really new for me and boy did I have fun, especially for Mother's Day. So that's the color scheme for that one. Now we're gonna take a closer look here at each one. This is the lighter, again, that was the Prisma, sorry, the Inktense pencils. This is the Distress Markers medium for this green based background. And I use the uh, Pretty Pink Posh Dewdrop thingamajigs on there. And then here is the Stampin' Up ink blended out with some Nouveau drops. So those are the cards and here I'm gonna show you some close-ups of those cards just in case that uh, wasn't good enough there. And I hope you liked it. I had a lot of fun doing this, I really did. And I learned a lot about the products that I keep buying yet don't use all the time. <laughs> so I hope you learned something too along the way. I'd love to hear your comments below if you have any questions or feedback. And thanks so much for joining me. All the supplies I used will be listed below in the description. And have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.